Hello everyone, I'm Allison Steinberg and welcome to In Focus. On Friday, the anti-Semitic group referred to as the UN General Assembly passed out a resolution demanding that Israel submit to a sustained humanitarian truce, leading to a cessation of hostilities. Wasn't there a sustained humanitarian truce going on when Hamas terrorists slaughtered 1,400 Jews, including hundreds of children, on October 7th? In fact, many of the Jews they killed were on kibbutzes that were delivering humanitarian and medical aid to Palestinians. The truth is, there has never been and can never be a long-lasting truce because this is about an ideology that will never accept Jews' right to exist, let alone the state of Israel. In response to both the UN and US pressure for a ceasefire, Benjamin Netanyahu delivered a blistering rebuttal. Just as the United States would not agree to a ceasefire after the bombing of Pearl Harbor or after the terrorist attack of 9-11, Israel will not agree to a cessation of hostilities with Hamas after the horrific attacks of October 7th. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that there is a time for peace and a time for war. This is a time for war. That is the clarity the world needs. That this is the battle of civilization versus barbarism. The UN has proven they are on the side of the barbarians. I don't even know if barbaric is a strong enough term for the savagery these terrorists committed. After kidnapping Shawnee Luke, they videotaped her lifeless, half-naked, and unnaturally contorted body on the back of a truck while the terrorists shouted Allah Akbar and spit on her back. As her family prayed she might still be alive, they were told that the monsters cut off her head. Pro-Palestinian sources claimed she was an Israeli soldier, as though that might have justified this. But she was a peace activist who abstained from Israel's mandatory military service as a conscientious objector. Netanyahu is correct. There is a time for peace and a time for war. You simply cannot have peace with barbarians who have no conscience, only a fervor to kill the infidel, which ultimately is not just Jews, but Western civilization. Here to discuss is Harley Lippman, Executive Committee of American Israel Public Affairs Committee. Thank you so much for being with us today. How are you? Thank you. Very well. So <laughs> how long is Israel supposed to be in a state of war and then ceasefire and war and ceasefire by nations and an ideology of hate? Do you agree that it's a time for war and it's not just Israel's war? No, th this is not just Israel's war. Jews are the canary in the coal mine. And it always starts with the Jews, but it never ends with the Jews. And if we've learned anything from the Holocaust, it's that when bad people say they're going to do things to Jews, we need to pay attention and listen because they do it. Yeah. But this all really emanates from Iran. Iran does 90 percent of the training of Hamas, funds them, and they're the ones that are really behind it. When you think that Iran, which had nothing to do with the Holocaust, yet is the world center of Holocaust deniers. Why would that be? Why would Iran be the world center? Only because they want to diminish any sympathy for Jews, and by doing that, to eliminate any sense that the Holocaust occurred or the claim was exaggerated. And why is that? Because they want to commit another Holocaust against the Jews. Yeah, I, I think you're totally spot on. There's really no question about that. And, you know, Jews used to feel safe here in America, and, and now I don't think that's really the case anymore. I mean, it's to the point now that they're seeking guns at a never-before-seen rate. What are you hearing from the Jewish community about that? Yeah, Jews are frightened. It, it's a shock to the Jewish community. Uh, the Jewish community is traumatized by this. You know, they've had a golden years in America for quite a while, especially since the end of World War II. And apparently the Holocaust never went away. It's, it's been in hibernation. But there's this uh, hatred of Jews that really speaks to hatred of the West, of civilization. And that's what this comes down to. Because when you look at the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, if we stand for anything as a nation, as a civilization, 
It's that whatever your grievance, you can't deliberately murder innocent women and children and elderly. And that's the problem we have here with the media. What's astonishing to me is how everybody's chanting against Israel when Israel is simply trying to defend itself. Yes, it's sad that innocent Palestinian civilians are being killed. But why is that? Hamas is using hospitals as a command and control center. They have tunnels underneath it. So they're the ones that are putting the Palestinian people at risk. They're exploiting the Palestinian people. And yet what's extraordinary is the world doesn't see that. All they see is, is bombs going off and they don't look at to why. They don't blame Hamas which just shows that there's an extraordinary outbreak of anti-Semitism. But again, like Iran said, Israel is the little Satan, America is the big Satan. So it's starting with Israel, but the ultimate goal is to destroy Western civilization and everything we stand for. Absolutely. And we are seeing that all unfold right before our eyes. It is truly an incredible time we're living through. And as you said, the anti-Semitism really is just worldwide. Uh, I have a photo here of a house marked with a uh, star of David in Germany. Uh, and Jews in Germany are now wondering if it's time to leave. But, I mean, where could they even go, really, at this point? Well, uh, <laughs> they could go to Israel. You know, the good news is uh, during the Holocaust, Jews were defenseless. There was no one to defend them. One of the main reasons for the creation of Israel is to provide a place for Jews to live where they won't be murdered and attacked. And this time, the Jewish people have a nation with a strong army and military, so they will defend themselves. We're just incredibly disappointed and stunned that the world just doesn't care about Jewish lives. You know, I wanna make a point about what horrible things that Hamas did, if I may say. You know, you can see this online. In fact, Hamas boasted this online so this is accurate and true. This isn't some kind of propaganda. When they went into a kibbutz, they took a, a, a woman who was pregnant. They held her down. They taped over her mouth so she couldn't scream. And, they, and she was pregnant. And they cut open her baby in front of her to see. And then they killed the baby and killed her. And they videotaped this. You can see this on Hamas' website online. Even during the Holocaust, this rarely happened. I'm not trying to minimize what the Nazis did. They, they systematically murdered six million Jews and many others. But it, it really got this personal, which shows that we're really at a time of Holocaust 2.0. And the world has to stand up because, again, it'll start with the Jews, but it'll end up being with everyone else. Yeah, the world really does need to stand up. So that is why it's shocking to see so much pushback uh, really on both the left and I'm seeing it even on the right and it's just heartbreaking to witness it. It's just completely, completely insane. Uh, now, Newsmax is reporting that Muslims here are demanding that Biden get a ceasefire from Israel or they won't vote for Biden. What's your response to this, Harley? Well, <laughs> what does a ceasefire mean? It means basically that Hamas wins and Israel loses and ultimately, Israel will be destroyed. Uh, Israel has to fight for its existence. And, you know, as Bibi Netanyahu said in his speech recently, uh, think of the United States. When the United States was attacked in Pearl Harbor, and it was a military installation, uh, the United States would not agree to a ceasefire. The United States fought against Japan and Germany and bombed those countries. And, it, and ultimately, it worked. I mean, think about it. Nearly 80 years later, four generations later, neither Germany or Japan have any appetite for war. But they were utterly and totally destroyed. That's why. That's when you have closure with military conflicts. So to have closure here, Israel has to totally and utterly defeat Hamas. And then you have an opportunity for peace. Because it's my hope that the Palestinian people in Gaza, if they haven't been brainwashed completely, want a better life, want a normal life, and don't want to be kidnapped and by, the, by Hamas, which they elected, like Germany elected Hitler, 
and that they want a better life. And it's our hope that there'll be a new leadership in Gaza that may not have may not like Israel, but can live alongside of Israel. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. Uh, now, despite uh, the threats against Jews all over the world, specifically on college campuses that we've seen uh, so so often recently, uh, John Kirby is now warning against Islamophobia, which is just baffling. Uh, I have a clip of that I'd like to play, and then I'll come right back to you. And the same goes you know, for here in the country. Kareem talked about what's going on on college campuses, but the same goes for Islamophobia. There's no place for that in the country. Uh, it must be condemned equally as strong, and, uh, and we all need to work with might and main to, to stop that kind of hate as well. So I guess Islamophobia is the liberal term for attacking Jews. I mean, this is just so preposterous. And, you know, I don't think I've seen even one protest against Islam on college campuses. Where does he get off exactly. saying this? No, that's what I was just going to say after watching what you just showed that John Kirby said. I don't know where that's coming from. Yeah. There are protests against Muslims. So the fact he threw that in, again, dilutes this incredible horror that these people perpetuated on innocent people, people at a music concert, you know, a family that was in their house. Uh, they took an 82-year-old grandmother, made her go on FaceTime with her family and tortured her in front of her family for her family to watch. They kidnapped another 85-year-old grandmother. Uh, you know, this, you know, it's hard to find words to describe how horrible this is. And who knows what's what's going to happen to them? I mean, I know personally of a woman named Yarden who was with her husband and three-year-old child. They were kidnapped and they were being taken to Gaza. And then they decided to make a break for it. And as they ran and bullets were flying, the mother, Yarden, said to her husband, you're faster than me, you're athletic, save our baby. And so they did. He ran with the baby, but she was caught and she's still in Gaza now, and God knows what they're doing to her. Remember, they, they repeatedly raped the women when they found them, they raped them in front of their parents, and then they killed the parents and the women. Uh, you know, they beheaded children with shovels. I, I, you know, it's hard to imagine somebody being more cruel than this. I, I you know, we're, we're all stunned by this, we, 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 we're, uh, you know, in a state of shock, actually, uh, at seeing this. And uh, we just know that Israel is now fighting for its survival. Yeah. And that's all it's fighting for. It's not against the Palestinian people. It's just trying to survive as a nation like any other nation. Yeah, that is a great way to put it. It truly is just devastating. And our thoughts and prayers are with everyone over in Israel. Harley Lippman, we're all out of time for today, but thank you so much for joining us and weighing in. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.